straight. So we want the arm here, we want the arm to come out, and right about when you're here, you start the movement forward. Now notice where the elbow is. Um, forget this part of the body for the time being. Just, just take from here up. The elbow is where? Above, above the armpit. If you get the, if you get down here like this and you hit too soon here and you back it, look where the elbow might be. Now you're pushing the ball. You don't have no flip, consequently no pop, no movement. So in order to ensure good pop, good movement, if you get down here, that arm comes up in that circle. Picture, if you will, a circle right here. Up into that circle, and then when you get here, you come out of the circle and reach much extension as you possibly can, and the flip comes through. Now the squeeze starts right there. So on the fastball, this ball comes off like that. Squeeze it out. Squeeze it out that way. Right here. Right there. See that action? It's not this. It's watch this road. It's that right there. Right there. That's the flip. Watch my hand how extended I when I release. Right there. Very, very, very important. I don't. I haven't had a. I haven't had a boy come to me in college yet that gets an extension. I haven't had one yet. So obviously we're not doing it to the level here. We should. They, they don't extend. They don't flip. We have to take two years to get them to do it. it. Takes two years to get a guy to do it. He doesn't. He gets a bad habit. But that's obviously very, very crucial to do that now. So remember that delivery circle boom now let's take the other part of the body the left side notice as I'm down here I'm coming out with that left side this is my sight just like a hitter keeps that shoulder in and he drives it forward drive this right at there and I let my backside take this out what I mean by that is don't pull this out yourself let my momentum from the backside in other words fight to keep that in Backside, take it out of it. Is that clear? That's very important. Here, just down here, watch that. And I throw the glove at the head. Why do I do that? I, I do that for two reasons. Number one, to keep my left side in. Number two, I want the hitter to be distracted when I do that. Now, sometimes you get a pitcher come back here. For some reason, they'll bring that glove in here. Look what happens when I bring the glove in. You got to watch for that. They don't let that arm come out here. And that gloves comes in here, it's gonna pull his shoulder right out. When that pull, shoulder comes out, the elbow's gonna drop. And when the elbow drops, everything goes wrong. You see, there's a lot of things that can go wrong. I'm trying to cover the areas that are most, most important. Now you as a pitcher can't see that, but if you remember what I'm telling you, you can tell somebody who's watching you what to look for. Tell someone's watching you. All right, here we go, one, two, three. Now, the landing. Refer to the turn four across your body. Well, you, you stand on the rubber. Your work is to draw a line, just scuff a line like I did, right to the home plate. Now, what you want to do with this line, when you land on the line, as you come out here, you should land just to the left or on the line. If you're landing over here, not too bad if you're not if you're not having any problems. But if you're landing here, you're throwing across your body. And if you're right-handed, most of your pitch is going to go high inside or high outside, depending on who's the left-handed or right-handed. You're going to have trouble with your breaking ball. So what you want to do is so you come through, you want to land on the toes so that you're going forward on the ball of your feet from here down, not on your heel. If you land on your heel, you're going to throw with your elbow again. So you want to get here. Here, right there, and bring it through. Okay. <clears throat> note, note where you where you land on your fastball, because when you throw your breaking ball, you should cut that stride back by about four inches. So instead of landing here, you should land about here. All right, here we go. One, two, three. All there is to it. Some of the things you want to look for, coaches, players, you don't want to do. The second part of your windup, if you get down here, I mean, in the third part, pitches, some, some pitches do this, some pitches do 
this, some do this. As you're doing that, what's this doing? It's moving. So as you're doing that, or, or, doing, or doing this, your leg's starting to go forward. Now again, your arm is behind your body. You do all kinds of problems. So very simply, here, here, get it up. Get that thing right up. Now, a lot of pitchers need the momentum. So what they do is they get it right about here, and they wind up, they'll start, they'll start pushing, pushing down. See, right here, up. See, so they get their arm through. That's fine. Whatever you have to do to get that thing going, you want to do it. I was going over this very fast, very quickly, and I think if you're really getting anything out of it, you should probably get as maximum out of it as that you actually try it. Of course, you can't do that. There is too many. But you should, certainly should work on it. Anybody have any questions on, on the windups? How, how much time I got, Jay? How much? About 10 minutes. I have 10 minutes. All right. Um, stretch. Again, right hand. Now, left hand is the same thing. Keep the wind up. It's a little different. Same thing. Only on the other side. The stretch. Actually, the stretch, you're starting on the second part of your wind up, really. So, where do you want to do it? You want to get the ball in where? Throw in position. You want to get it here so you can throw the ball to the plate. One thing you don't want to do, uh, most pitchers feel in order to get the ball to the plate quick, they got to start to the plate with the left leg. That's not so. That's not going to get your arm, make your arm get there any faster. So you want to kick this way, or just kick small. You want to make a small kick, keep that arm going. Here, the key is as you kick, you want to break. Don't kick, then break. Because most base runners are going to go, as soon as that heel lifts the ground, they're going. So if you do this, and then do this, you guys got a heck of a jump on you. So as you lift your foot off the ground, it's big here. And then all you do is go to the second part, the third part. Everything's the same. So the stretch is simply parts two and three of the windup. That's all it is. Things you gotta be careful of is as you kick your foot, you're doing this type of stuff here. It gives a runner an extra step, two steps. It'll make it awfully difficult on the catcher to throw them out. Awfully difficult. So all you're trying to do is get the ball up there with something on it as quickly as you can. Bang, right there, that's it. You should get the ball up to the plate. By the time your left heel lifts off the ground, by the time the catcher catches the ball, 1.4 seconds. So above that, putting an awful strain on that catcher. As you get into college, we try to get it through one, three, one, three, five. Try to get it that. Some guys get lower, some guys really have to throw it. But you want to try to get under one, four. Now, left hand is a different. You can hold a guy on. You know, basically, your, your drill is the same here. You have the same technique. But sometimes when you get here, you may want to go to first base. I don't have time to go into that today. That's, that's a session in itself. I just want to go to those fundamental things. Okay. No questions on that. Coach. Yeah. How can these righty pitches, a lot of them when they first start from the stretch, rather than bringing their arms up through their body, they're coming around like that. What can they tell themselves to, you know, when they're going up through? Well, any motion, that all that motion is wasted. Just say I'm wasting that energy. The best thing to do is you hear you're in here getting the sign, just just naturally do this. See, if you're here and you're doing this all the time, yeah, that's what I want. That's taking energy away from you. You know, don't work, don't work hard unless you have to. You know, you hear like they get the sign. Now watch, the simple thing is I'm bringing my foot, I'm just bringing my hands right here. Just just keep in mind, you. It's what you want to do is get to the throw position, only you, you're doing this from a still position now, so it's easier. You're in here, you get the sign right here. Another thing that's very important, don't look at, keep it, see this foot, my shoulder? What do you think the base runner's going to do? You've got to move the shoulder back here before you go there. So a good base runner sees that shoulder move, it's gone. I guarantee you, if you stretch and keep that shoulder, you can see a third of the way to second base before you lose the runner. You got a guy over here, you can't pick him off. You gotta pick him off. No man can get back to first or second. So just stay straight. Lay your chin around your shoulder. So it looks like that. A couple of moves and get over there. I, can't, I don't have time to go to throw on the first base over there. That's work on that. That's a, that's a problem too. So mechanics and the windup and the stretch are very important. Anybody got any questions? Now let's talk about, I have, I have someone over here, anybody with a glove. Let's talk about different pitches. pitches. Now I work from a
my pitches in college were from a drill position almost exclusively in the early part of that the, um, the season when we're, the, when we're working out in the, in the gym. The drill position is simply here like this, with my feet planted. And my feet will not leave the ground, but my weight will shift. This is the throwing position. This is what I do. I'm here, I'm down inside, and I throw that. That's the drill position. What does that do for me? That lets me see the importance of the clip. See that? See on my shoulder? The extension? This is the best thing in the world for you. Here. That's the drill position. Every pitch that we throw is thrown off here. Everything, everything we do, it should be on a level ground. So that you can, yeah. The ball tailing that way, I can see what my fastball is doing. I can see if my arm has got that extension out there. I can feel my weight shifting from back. I can't throw unless I'm back. I can see the circle I'm in here, here, back. See that tail on the ball? That's what you don't want. When I throw a ball, you want to hit that glove all the time. Here, with the fingers. Now watch the squeeze. The ball tail, the bigger the pump. All right. The change up. Now how I teach a change up is a way a lot of guys at Big League use it. There are other ways. I use three fingers. And the key to the change up, remember this. When you throw a change up, it's got to have the same spin or as close to the same spin as a fastball. It shouldn't slide a curve. It should not slide a curve. Remember that. That's not a changeup. That makes it a little easier. If it spins or slides, the hitter's going to have an advantage on it. Because you're going to pick it up. It's going to have the same spin. It should come from the same motion. So the way I have found it's the easiest way to do it, take my hand like that, on the ball, across the seams. You cannot throw the ball hard this way. Right. You cannot throw hard. And watch out. I have, I have That's the change. Just, then you think fastball. You think fastball. Here, as I get in here, I got the change right here. No, you didn't see me get it. See, I got the fastball right up here. I get in here, I just grab it here. Back, down. I think fastball. But my arm going, do everything the same as a fastball. And what happens at the end is the hitter's out front. You want the hitter to swing at this one. You just push the ball back in the air. That adjustment comes on, if it's, you try it out on your fingers. That's the next thing I was going to say. If the change is coming, you catch and you work together on it. Coach, if the ball is coming with too much velocity, that means you've got to choke it more. If it's coming in too slow, that means you've got to bring it on your fingertips. Okay? Yeah, just told you, everybody, just put your fingers like that. I hold, yeah, across the seams, that'll ensure you of getting all three fingers on the seam. Again, when you're throwing a ball, you'll, you'll, because I use all three fingers when I throw it. You want to develop a changeup? When you're playing catch here in the morning, just get, quick catch, throw three fingers. Keep throwing it, so you're used to grabbing it. <laughs> you got a fastball on a changeup, get them both over, you got a hell of a chance playing pro baseball. Hell of a chance. Both those pitches. I guarantee it. If you got good marks, I guarantee you, you'll be recruited heavily by Brown University if you throw those two pitches. Now, the drill position, equally important when you're working on that. Now, how about the curveball? Let's go to the curveball. That's the only three pitches I'm going to work with. I don't want to mention the slider. But I don't think you should fool around with the slider unless you're absolutely have expert instruction on it. Now, without sounding egotistical, I consider myself an expert on teaching a slider, and, and it's because I was taught by probably one of the best slider pitchers of all time, Dick Donovan. And there's, there's a right and a wrong one. But I don't think you should throw it until you develop the fast change triple. Now, there's no way that a slider should interfere or deter you from your curve. A lot of players don't want to throw a slider because it hurts their curve, or vice versa. Two separate, different pitches all together should have no effect on your uh, on one another. Let's talk about the curve. The curve ball, you remember, we called, earlier I said, any breaking ball, we change the pressure finger from where? From 
pressure finger goes to the middle finger on the breaking board. So what we do, we just change the thumb over here. All right, the thumb here, we choke the curve a little more on the fastball. By the way, I didn't mention this, but the fastball should be out as far on your fingertips as you possibly can hold it without losing control of the ball. In other words, you can't get it out here, you know, so you don't have no feel for it. But it should be out as far as you can possibly go without losing control of it. You don't want to choke your fastball, you're going to take away from the velocity. Now your curve ball, you want to choke a little bit. Thumb under the pressure finger. Now, there's a lot of different ways to hold a curve. I'm showing you the way I hold it, the way I do it. Now, the only difference here is you start your drill the same way. You come down here, and you get right about here, then your thumb comes under. Now, remember that circle I told you about? You call that circle? It's important. You get here, you get here, now your hand turns. Now, you turn this way, and you stay in the circle. Your fastball, you come out of the circle, the curve, you stay in it, and come right through here. Right here, right there. The back of the wrist, you can flip. Things you don't want to do is come here, drop the elbow, throw it this way. Do that stop. It's not going to get you anywhere. You may get a couple hitters out. We're not good hitters, but as soon as you stop playing against good hitters, they love to see that flat breaking stuff. Right, Jay? Right. That flat breaking stuff, just your rise, you pop right out of here. You want to break something down. So you don't. Stay on top of the ball all of the time. On top of the ball. Sure. 